Welcome to the Greatness Garage, where small business owners come to get the tools and insights to work on their business, not just in it. To get more, check out the Greatness Garage on Facebook and join to become a member. Aloha and welcome to the Greatness Garage. We are here for another fantastic interview. I've got Dr. Matt Hansen here, a fantastic chiropractor, inventor, and just creative big thinker. And uh, we are so excited to have you, Matt. Welcome to the Greatness Garage. Great to be here, Brad. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So you have done some amazing things and I just, I love the, the power and the, the, the passion and just the positiveness and all the peas there that you, that you bring to what you do. And, I, and you are a, an energy that really comes through and, and you face some amazing, you know, challenges and, and, and growths and, and expectations and acquisitions and a lot of stuff us as business people go through. And so I think you have a, a wealth to share with us all. So um, I'm going to give you this, you know, let you do a little bit about your business and give a 30 second background of yourself. So go ahead, the floor is yours. Sure. Uh, I uh, own and operate Cornerstone Chiropractic in Minot, North Dakota. Um, and uh, I've been a chiropractor for about 10 years. Uh, I grew up in North Dakota. Uh, I spent about 10 years living in Minneapolis, which I loved, but I'm glad to be back home. And I love to hunt and fish. I've got a uh, nine year old boy who uh, takes up a lot of my free time. And, um, uh, spent a lot of time cooking for him and getting him to bed, all that kind of fun dad stuff. So he's kind of like the light of my life and the joy of my life. I also have a, a dog, a uh, three-year-old English Cocker Spaniel, who is, uh, <laughs> takes up the remainder of my free time. So uh, I love to be at home, love to take care of my patients. I love to think big and, and be creative. And I'm, um, I'm very uh, passionate about things that interest me. Um, never was a tremendous student in school um, on subjects that were boring to me. I'd, I'd know enough and, and do enough to pass them, but when something interested me, I'd dig in and go after it um, wholeheartedly until I felt like I understood it. Um, and I spend a lot of my time thinking. Um, sometimes, it, I consider it a good thing, but sometimes I'm up till three or four in the morning if I've got an idea that excites <laughs> me just going around in my head. I think, you know what? I think we've all experienced with that. You know, that's the beauty and the the the, the one of the 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 hazards of a uh, entrepreneur, right? That, that when that idea hits, you want to you want to get some gr grounding to it. Yep. Yeah, so yep, that's awesome. Well, awesome. Well, welcome, and um, we're excited here. So the first thing I want to start, we start, you know, with that power seven questions, and the first one is this: is what is something profound you hope someone says someday about you or and or your business? Um, <clears throat> something profound I hope that somebody says someday about me or my business, uh, is that, um, they, uh, revolutionized and energized and grew, um, the consciousness surrounding what I did. Um, mm. that's kind of my goal is to, to expand or, 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 uh, or to, um, to expand or to, um, increase the knowledge base and increase the awareness uh, of, of what I'm passionate about. I also uh, really hope that, that uh, you know, profoundly um, that they, uh, one of the most profound things to me is that you lived a life and, and run a business worth respecting. Um, mm -hmm. That's a good um, pillar or milestone for those types of businesses, whatever they are. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it, you know, it, and, that, and then it's so much to just is really like, you know, you said it is to, to be a servant in the way of spreading knowledge and, and, and expanding yeah. Yeah. understanding of that's, that's cool. That's I love that. That's a cool one. Um, so mistakes are huge, right? We learn so well from our mistakes. I always tell people that they, they aren't going to be proud about uh, overcoming sitting on a beach, but when they overcome big challenges, it's important. So what for you has been the greatest mistake that you have ever made in business and, and how did it impact and change you? Um, the greatest mistake I ever made in business was probably, um, was probably first searching for the wrong profession or wrong vocation. Mm. Um, I spent my undergrad training to be a pastor or minister, which is amazing. And I, I have almost respect for the people that are. But I, I got to after undergrad a three year education and the fact that that wasn't for me. <laughs> it went from being a, a spiritually rewarding thing to go into a church to to work and then kind of draining. And so um, through some hard lumps and lessons, I learned that that, that wasn't the direction I needed to be in right then. And very 
tough lesson, but very important lesson. So then I had to figure out a different direction for my life. And I found a good one. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, you know, when you look at the fact that there's so many times that it's, it's so important to know what you know, but it's important to know what you don't know, or know what you like and know what you don't like. You know, mm -hmm. um, they, what do they say sometimes? It's most important to start at no, but you don't know mm -hmm. what to say no to until you, you've experienced that. So I've heard another one too, actually. A, a big mistake I made right out of chiropractic school was starting my own business right away in probably not the correct neighborhood at definitely the wrong time. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, so that wasn't very, a very good financial decision. Um, didn't make a lot of money where I was at right away when I first started and um, accumulated some debt. Um, but uh, it was also very helpful in the fact that, you know, right on my own, having to figure out what I had to do made me a very good doctor. So you didn't, mm -hmm. have, any, you didn't have an experienced person to go to to figure out the situations that came to you. You had to figure them out yourself. And that's something that I've owned going forward. And it also helped me to make more strategic decisions about, you know, what I do moving forward as far as business goes. Yeah. It makes you feel more comfortable in the fear, doesn't it? Yep. The fear of not have, of knowing I have to figure this out and you yep. can do it. Yeah. Yeah. It, cool. made, it made me a very good practitioner in that sense that um, you have to know what you're doing or be confident enough in yourself to be able to express to the person so that they feel confident and comforted. You know, yes. it was, that was very good. And then also, yeah, like I said, in business, knowing that um, that a lot of times you don't you don't need analysis of paralysis, but you need to have um, some good information before you, you jump in. I thought I, I had a perfect place picked out, but it really that community didn't didn't support the kind of practice that I wanted to set up there. And it was right in uh, in 2008 2009 when I set it up um, during the recession, which hit the area I was in really hard as well. Mm. So. I had a lot of people that were like, this sounds awesome. It's great, but I just lost my job. I, I probably, probably heard that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, and that's a tough, that's, you know, we talk about over coming, overcoming objections, right? <laughs> that's a yeah. tough one to overcome, it's isn't it? Tough one to overcome. Yeah. Well, uh, it's completely understandable. Yeah. So, well, um, you know, I, I, I think that that's important and, and it kind of runs in. So sometimes getting out of that, we learn some of our, our stuff and, and the motivation that gets them out of it and runs us into the next question. So what is your favorite quote and why? Um, boy, um, my favorite quote, uh, is from Wallace Waddles and it's the best way to make the world a better place is to make the most of yourself. Ooh. Um, the reason I like that, um, it says a lot and it goes along a lot with my philosophy that, um, if you really want to do something about poor people, stop being one. Mm -hmm. If you really want to do something about sick people, don't be one. Um, if you really want to do something about, um, about, overweight people don't be, you know, like anything that you, you want to change in the world, you must first change in yourself. Yeah. Uh, because, um, because you're, I mean, you're, if you're not part of the problem, that's good. Then you can use some of those resources to, to help the problem. But the first thing you got to do is, is look to yourself and change yourself and be the best person you can be. Um, Steve Jobs at Apple was always kind of criticized for not giving to charity, but he said, you know, what he wants to focus on is, giving people the best technology they can so they can help charity. They can help people. They can grow their lives. They can expand their lives. Um, I think that's really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. That's in that, uh, you know, it just, it puts ownership and, and kind of that, that kind of um, stance to it. So very cool. Yeah. And it really keeps you from the, you know, the temptation of um, looking outside of yourself um, to solve your own problems. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, I, amen. So um, this is going to be cool. You're, you're such a, a wise and uh, um, learned person now, right? What is, one thing, <laughs> what is one thing you would tell the starting out version of yourself, other than pick a different neighborhood, right? Um, what is the yeah. one thing you would tell the starting out version of yourself, um, and how would it have changed your life? Uh, one thing I would tell the starting out version of myself, how would it have changed my life? Um, so I'd go, I'd go back in time and tell myself this. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. And so I started out when I was 30 and I'm 39 now. So I'd tell my 30 year old self, uh, dude, don't worry about anything because in nine years you're going to have a time machine. <laughs> 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 it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, no, what, 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 the advice I would give myself. Then you go go back and get the sports almanac. You're good. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It is, um, is there's really no, um, there's no alternative to persistence. Mm. Um, 
the you know the uh being a big creative thinker and and easily distracted in that sense um you know it's easy to jump from one way to another and i've seen people in my lives that have, have been tempted by that and they make a lot of lateral moves instead of forward moves and so sticking you know as a as a chiropractor for 10 years sticking with this i've grown to a point where i'm you know consider myself having a successful practice and that's been 90 percent showing up every day and being consistent yeah. to my patients and, and, and being there and, and letting it grow um and it's like investing too you know you know you can look to invest in something that's going to get you a 200 percent return in 90 days um that's cool you can look for those things but you're you know you're you're better off putting, you know, not better off necessarily, but um, there's also some merit into putting money away that returns a consistent four or 5% interest because yep. then in 10 years or 20 years, you're going to have, um, you're going to have what you're looking for and maybe want it to have yeah. um, 10 years ago, but you know, you, you can have it if you're, if you're patient. You say so, right. You know, it, and, and there's a thing that says, you know, if you, if you're short term, if your vision is short term versus long term, it's tougher to have persistence in the short term. You're going to, you're going to follow the blinky shiny because everything's changing in the short term. In the mm -hmm. long term, things become more, you know, and, and more uh, consistent and, and structured. Um, but no, that's, uh, I, I like that. No, you know, there's, that reminds me of the one that says, uh, you know, there's a list of 10 things that it doesn't take any talent or something to do. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so yep. you look at that and that's one of those two. It's just being persistent. And um, yeah, and that's, also too, I, I tell myself, don't be afraid to delay gratification today to have abundance tomorrow. It kind of goes along the same thing. Mm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so what is the one thing you did that hurt but are absolutely loved that you did it? Uh, well, giving up my, my dream of, of the ministry hurt, and I'm, and I'm glad I did it. Um, okay. Moving away from my, my friends and my um, – my social base in Minneapolis to, to mine it, um, was something that hurt quite a bit, but I'm glad I did it. Um, <laughs> I think my whole life is just a series of things that hurt that, that, I'm, that you, I'm glad I did. Yeah. You there's, later learn. <laughs> there's really, there's a lot of things that I, I, that have happened in my life that I, I could regret, but, uh, it's a really, you know, as I spend time regretting them, I realize it's a wasted emotion and, yeah. and there's, you know, there's always things you can learn about yourself and, and others in every situation. You know, that, that is the tough thing is that, you know, um, you know, there's a joke that says sometimes you got to go f through the fires of hell to, to know what really exists and what means something. And, mm -hmm. you know, every time when you go through that, th th we're tried and we're tested. And, you know, you look at, um, I remember talking just with a client the other day and we were talking about um, surrounding your, your management team with people that are, are saying no to you in a, in a, pro in a po you know, a, a positive, challenging way. And that refines your ability. If you come and say, hey, we want to do this. I, my, I, my mind is saying we want to do this. And you don't have somebody to reflect back, whether it be a coach like myself or it be your management team to say, hey, I, I challenge that. I question that. I question that. It, that for, causes you to either, one, get, you know, pass on from that idea or become more refined in that diet and, and know the strength mm -hmm. of it. And so yep. I, would, I would understand that. And then it, it probably It's difficult, though. It's very difficult, especially for me. Um, but it, 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 you're absolutely right. It is critical. Yeah. So number six, how close were you to giving up? What got you to that point? And then what got you back? Um, boy, um, I was awfully close to giving up. Um, when I first, the situation, uh, what brought me to, to mine out was going through a divorce, wanting to be closer to my son then mm -hmm. selling that practice, which um, was not successful. So I had to sell it for a, a, a big loss and moved here. I was in my early thirties with $250,000 of education in my brain, um, starting over from zero patients at a new clinic um, and bartending at night to be able to buy groceries and diapers. Yep. <laughs> um, and so, and at that point, the economy in this area was really good and you could make six figures driving a truck, you know, so yep. <laughs> Do I, should I just yell <laughs> and, um, and, and maybe, you know, uh, have some money in the bank versus killing myself here. Uh, what got me to, um, be persistent. Um, and sometimes it, it, mostly it's that the, the clinic was growing and that I was in, in, in an environment that was flourishing and, and the, the work I was doing, I was doing maybe even less work here than I was in Minneapolis, but getting better results and more traction. Mm. 
So that Very was cool. incredible. And well, sometimes kind of cool. the situation you're in that keeps you keeps you in there too. I mean, that's not a good motivator, but sometimes that's the case too. Right. You know, and, and there's that, that you know, you, you say that too, like you said, you know, you, you said it, your persistence and, 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 and I think you, it sounds like you learned that instead of being pulled aside to that truck driving job that paid 120 grand right mm -hmm. now, you knew, Hey, if I stay this course, I can make that long term and, and beyond and doing something I passionately love. And I love that. What kind of sounds like you were saying too, was the, the, the positive, the, um, um, the, the practice, the energy in the practice, and then the, the kind of being able to do something and focusing on doing what you love got you through that. And so, that's a yeah, that's kind of a cool it, way to hold that. It's one of the points, and that I, I know um, talked about this before, but there's really nothing, no job in in this world is too hard if you have the proper tools. But if you're trying to, you know, if if you're trying to um, to frame out um, an entire house using a, a you know a, a hammer that you got in a ten dollar toolkit at Walmart or whatever, that's you know made meant for hanging up pictures, it's going to be a difficult job. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, that, that was a lesson to me there too, because, um, like I said, I was doing the same things and even with a little bit less effort in the right place yeah. and getting traction. And I've noticed that with, with my staff too, when I, when I've just been killing myself to try to get somebody to do something and then we get somebody else in there and I do the same or less effort and get better results, you know, so yeah. getting that tool kit surrounding you that's, that's positive is better than than trying to um, trying to do a job. That's one thing to assess too. Is is, well, is, I, is this job impossible, or are the tools I'm trying to use impossible to make it work? Yeah. Well, and you talk like when you talk about with people, and 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 it, let's throw, let me throw a little chiropractic terminology out there. The alignment, right? That, that when when that alignment is is so good, it just it just boom. That's when you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So, looking ahead. What is the gap that you feel needs to be closed by yourself or your company to get to the next level, the next succeed, next this? Um, the gap that needs to be closed for myself, um, and it's something we've already talked about, which is funny because I've, I've come a long way, but I still got a long, a long way to go, is um, for myself, it's not looking for distraction. Hmm. It's, um, it's focus on what I'm doing. Um, and um, when I'm in a space where I'm not busy or overwhelmed, um, not looking for another distraction to fill that, but taking that time to reflect and go through any pain, painful things, or that's 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 one one thing that um, you know a lot of people that are very busy or ADHD or, or whatever else um, have to be careful of is that they're, they're not trying to fill their time or, or make themselves feel overwhelmed so that they're not taking the time to, to go through and feel the emotions that may be painful and work through the stuff that may yeah. be painful. So that's, yeah. that's the gap I have to work on closing in my, in my life is, is saying like, um, Oh, that seems like a good idea, but is that a distraction or is that something that's fulfilling to me? Yeah. Um, and so something else uh, for my business, the gap that we need to close, um, I believe, uh, you know, we've, we've got some, some growth right now. So, um, mm -hmm. we need to figure out that growth, figure out, you know, the space we're going to be working in cause we're kind of outgrowing our present space, uh, figuring out, you know, um, adding different doctors, adding different staff. Um, and, and so I think, um, the gap that needs to be closed is just having a clear vision on that. Yeah. Right. The vision on growth is tough because you're talking beyond the fringe. You're talking beyond that. Yeah, and that's a, a fun place to be, but it's also scary as hell, right? Yep, yep. It always reminds you of that one where the person starts up a computer or a business, and they have an online thing, and they all stand around it, and all of a sudden it's like one order, oh, two or three, oh, four or five, oh, yeah, and all of a sudden, like a thousand orders, and they all like, oh, my God, <laughs> they lose their minds, you know? Yeah, I, I get that, so. Yeah. The, the challenge of the girls, so awesome. Well, that was an awesome Power 7. Um, the next one um, we'd love to ask is um, – what is something that, that you think the garage members should be asking themselves? Um, I think something the garage members should be asking themselves are, um, I think that question we just went over, is this, is this thing that I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about or excited about, is this distraction, is this something that's going to be helping me? And, and, and being members of the garage, they probably know that um, you should be basing those decisions based on your values versus yep. um, versus what might be interesting or, or what might be a distraction. That's yeah, oh, great one. Um, 
So what might be um, something that's helped you and something that you might want to share, like a foundational thought that you would like to share with the garage? Like, you know, a foundational thought. Um, and I, I kind of had it, it just slipped out of my brain, but um, um, can we come back to that one? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I guess foundational. I, I guess I would say, you know, um, a foundational thought is is have um, have a faith or some sort of um, consciousness in a higher power, something beyond you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a, you know, for me, it's it's God. For you, it might be the universe or consciousness, or it might be humanity, whatever it is. But but know that there's something beyond you, so it doesn't all land on your shoulders. Um, and then also have um, a clear vision of what success is to you, um, mm. and, um, and 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 what that looks like. Because if you're just if success to you is just getting more and more and more, there's no there's no winners in that game. You know, there's no winners in the game yeah. of more because there's always can be more. So have a clear I, defined idea of, of what success is to you. Yeah, define your contentment. Define your peace, right, on your own yeah. terms. That's a that's a great one. Uh, yeah, I love that one. Um, so any parting words of, of wisdom, insight, or encouragement for, for the garage members? Um, wisdom uh, would be, um, I would encourage everyone listening um, to do uh, as much studying as possible. And then... Conversely to that, I would encourage you, if you are doing a lot of studying, um, spend at least as much time thinking as you do reading, mm -hmm. um, or even maybe more time thinking than you do reading. That's a good point. That, that, that spot of contemplation, of, of putting it in order and letting your mind and your I think, I, Yeah, I'm a real big believer that, um, that you know, we, we, we understand that if we um, just – hitch up to the saddlebag and are shoving Doritos and Ho-Hos and Twinkies into our mouth, we're, we're going to get fat and bloated. Um, but we don't necessarily understand that if, we're keep, if we just keep on inundating our mind with all this information, especially if it's not um, curated, yeah. you know, if just whatever's on TV or this next podcast or this whatever else, just something to keep distracted, just keep on putting on in this information and then never exercise our mind, our minds can get fat, bloated, and out of shape too. Wow, that's great. Well, and, and, and not only that, you don't reduce down the nuggets that you can use out of exactly. whatever information you're consuming. Yeah, one wow. practice I, I need to get back into, which I've done, it was been really, really helpful, is there's, uh, there's some books I've read 10 times, and I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna go back and make a, 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 a 10th grade high school book report on this book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and that's that's what I did, and so it's it's very helpful. That's a good practice. If you read something that you really enjoyed, then just take down, take some time, type out what you what you learned about it, and then review that information. That's awesome. Well, yeah, and I know you know I used to like tell people like if you're going to a conference or something like that, have a, have a notepad that has three things, and on the end of it, you got to walk out. There was only three things that you're going to take and you're going to implement. You know, and make sure you actually do those three. So yep. Oh, I agree oh. with you 100%. Yep. Awesome. Dr. Matt, thank you so much for your insights. Thank you so much for just your, your authenticity, your transparency, and just um, your, your guidance and wisdom. And so we My appreciate pleasure. it so very much. And um, we're excited. Everybody, continue to check out The Greatness Garage. There's more interviews that will be coming. There's one before this. This is, is, um, is exciting. I'm so blessed to do it. I'm so glad to share this time with you. Uh, it was a pleasure, Brad. Thanks awesome. so much for having me. Thanks, brother. Have a great one. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed the interview today and found the value that you can implement in your business immediately. Remember, action is what makes this information all worth it. If you need help figuring out what that action is, go to callwithbrad.com and we'll get some clarity and help you figure out what that should be.